Karina and I'm going to be presenting today's uh, presentation for you on the EPP and we're going to be having a look at some basic ad um, admin functions. So these are functions that you potentially were doing in TWMS. We're now going to look at how you do these functions in the Enterprise Protection Platform or what I will be referring to as the EPP because the Enterprise Protection Platform is a lot to say. <laughs> okay, team. Now, as always, we love questions. So if you have any questions, um, please pop them in the chat window. Our microphones are switched off just purely because there's quite a, you know, there's a lot of us in here today. And if we had microphones open, it would get a little bit noisy. So we do have the chat window if anybody has any questions. Um, I got some of my um, teammates on the call with me today. So they'll be looking at the chat window and answering any questions that come through if I do miss them because I will be focused on um, presenting but if I do happen to see the questions come through I will try try to answer them but the team will be there if we don't have an opportunity to get to those questions during the training we definitely will um, get back to you after the training has um, after the webinar is completed with any answers that you may have again um, team I mentioned this last time um, each of our clients, you do use our system slightly, um, potentially slightly differently. So I am going to, uh, oh, am I echoing? Am I echoing for everybody? Not for you, Prakash? Oh, no, you're very quiet again. <laughs> no, maybe. Do you have a couple of um, computers around you, Justine? Potentially that's where the echo might be coming from. Sorry if it's echoing for you. Um, so, team, um, because our clients can use our database, our, our platform in different ways, I'm going to try to keep the training as generic as I possibly can. If you do have something which is a little bit more um, bespoke for your business, again, pop the question in the chat window and we can get back to you um, after the training, after the webinar. Okay, so for the webinar team, I'm just going to turn my camera off so I don't distract you and we shall get stuck into it. Okay, so let's do this. So what are we going to be talking about today? So we're going to be looking at three admin functions. We're going to be starting off with how we set up new user accounts. So if you've got someone new starting with you within the business and you'd like to set them up with a new account. So we'll have a look at that process. We'll have a look at different options you have for uploading documents. Um, against a worker's profile. So there's a couple of ways you can do that in the EPP. And we'll have a look lastly at creating skill matrices. So what a skill matrix is and how we go about creating a skills matrix. So let's start off with um, setting up new user accounts. So um, oh, before we do that, actually, I just want to make sure that everyone is comfortable with logging into the EPP. So to log into the EPP, the URL is au.dampstraglobal.com. Your email address is your login details and then your password is the same as your password uh, is for TWMS. They should be the same. Okay, team. If you're unsure what your email address is for your login, if you do jump into TWMS and have a look at your login details for TWMS, this will give you the email address that was used to create your TWMS account. And that is the uh, email address that you will now use for um, the EPP. Um, JP has popped that URL in the chat window if anyone is looking for it. So thank you so much, JP. Much appreciated. Okay, so <clears throat> how do we create a new user account? So team, really, really easy to create a new user account. Um, when it comes to creating new user accounts, there are three different levels of access that you can give um, your users. So before we go in and look at how we create an account, let's have a look at those three different user um, levels that you can apply to your users. So first of all, we've got level one. So level one is the most basic access to the EPP. What that will give your users is basic reporting. So those base, that basic reporting will include um, being able 
to view time cards, being able to have a look at the on-site now report. So seeing who's actually on site at any time during the workday or um, work week, and then be able to run a basic skills report. Okay, so you've got very basic um, reporting there. Um, they'll also be able to view a worker's profile. And when they view that profile, they'll just have restricted access to that profile, in particular when it comes to viewing their skills. So they'll be able to view their skills. Let me just jump into the platform and bring up a worker and I'll show you what I mean. So they'll be able to view a worker's profile. When they have a look at their skills, they'll be able to see the skills that the worker has. They just won't be able to expand on that skill and they won't be able to view any attachments that go along with that skill. OK, so they won't be able to look at the evidence supporting that skill. OK, so they'll be able to view the skill here. They just won't be able to expand it and click on on the evidence. OK, so they're your level one users. We then move up to level two users. So level two users will have additional reporting options. So they'll still be able to see time cards on site now and basic skills reports, but they'll be also able to run reports on visitors, um, online training, any online um, training um, that uh, may need to be done prior. Um, they'll be able to view skills matrices and they'll be able to view job matrices, which is a new process. What they'll also be able to do is view document attachments. So what that means is with skills, they'll be able to expand on the skills and then go in and have a look at that attachment. Um, Pauline has a message. I'm sorry, I thought setting up a new user account was adding a new employee to the actual table. Ah, so um, that process, Pauline, is um, setting up a new user account. That's actually creating a new worker profile. So how you create a new worker profile isn't actually in the um, EPP in, in Manage Your Work site. Where you would go to do that is toggle across to Manage Your Company. And in Manage Your Company, that gives you access to the contractor management portal. And this is where you'll be able to um, set up new workers there. What I'll do for you, Pauline, is I actually did some training on this a couple of weeks ago. So let me just copy, send that back. I'm not going to watch that video. Oh, I'm just going to put a link to that video in the chat for you um, and that'll actually take you through the process of setting up a new worker okay so yeah you'll be able to go in there and, and set up a new worker so this process of setting up new user profiles is setting up um workers to be able to come into the epp and actually view um workers profiles in the epp wonderful okay so level two I can go in and I can expand on skills and I can view, view those actual skills. I also have access to skills matrices and some more in-depth reporting. Okay, the last level that we have are level three users. So with level three users, um, you have all the same reporting that level one and level two have, but we also have access to advanced reporting. So you can look at DNA schedules, questionnaires, that type of thing. And also you're able to view document attachments as well. So you can go in, as we just saw, expand on skills and look at, look at those skills there. Okay, so um, they're the three levels. So when you're setting up a worker, you'll need to decide uh, when you're setting up access for a user, you'll just need to decide which level of access your um, user requires. Okay, any questions in regards to that? No? Okay, well, let's go in and have a look at how we actually do that process. So an important thing that you need to know with doing this process is that not only do you have to be either a level two or a level three user, but you also have to be assigned what we call a work site contact. Okay, so 
here's my login here and you'll see that I have been signed a worksite contact. Being a worksite contact, what that means for me is that I have a create new user button up here in the top right hand corner. OK, so how I get that button is by being a worksite contact contact. OK, if you need to be a worksite contact because you need to um, be able to add users, there's two ways that you can get that access. If somebody within your business already has a worksite contact, is a worksite contact, they can give you that ability. Alternatively, you can contact Damstra and Damstra will assign that worksite contact to your profile and then you'll be able to create new users. Um, an important thing that you need to understand when it comes to creating new users is that you can only give someone access that you already have. OK, so if you're only a level two user, you can only give people access up to level two. If you're level three, you can give people access up to level three. Um, if you are a, a worksite contact, you can make somebody else a worksite contact. OK, so super important that we, that we understand that. You can only give someone um, access that you have, so the same access that you've got. OK, let's go in and create a new user. So to create a new user, we click the Create New User button and we enter in our user's name. Now, team, it's really important when you're entering in a new user's name that the name that you enter in here matches their worker profile. OK, so if you are giving your user um, someone that is mobilised onto a work site uh, access, the name that you enter in here needs to match what's um, been added in for their profile. I'll explain why in a second. OK, so we just need to make sure that's the same. We enter in their email address. I'm not sure what Jane's email address is, so I'm just going to make one up. tight today. Um, we then grant them access. So we either make them level one, level two or level three. For the purposes of this training, I'm going to give Jane level three access, but obviously that will um, be determined by what you need to do. Um, mobile number is optional. You don't need to enter that in. So this is all we need to do to start off with. And then I click create user. What will happen is the, um, Jane's profile uh, will be created, a user account will be created for her, and an email will be sent to her with her details, okay, with her login details, okay. Now, once we've created Jane's uh, login, we'll see that her name ap appears on our list of users. I can see here password reset required. So just a handy little hint, if someone, if you've created an account for someone and they have logged in, their account status will sit as valid account. If you see password reset required, that's a handy little hint that they actually haven't jumped in yet and reset their password. Okay, team, so Gab gives you a, give you a little hint there. Now, once we've created Jane's access, we've given her general level three access. Now, how our system works is that we can then give Jane some more specific access if we like. So let's go in and have a look at how we do that. So first of all, I display Jane's profile. And one of the first things that I need to do is I need to link Jane's user access to the EPP to her worker profile. OK, so in the EPP, you are able to give people who don't have a worker profile access to the EPP. So you might have the CEO of your company who doesn't get inducted on a work site, but he would really like to see what's happening within the business. So you would create him an EPP login. You just don't. Uh, he just doesn't have a worker worker profile. If though your worker does have a, your um, user does have a worker profile, what we need to do is link those um, accounts. So we're telling the EPP that Jane is actually a worker on this work site. 
And we do that down the bottom here in link employee. Um, now, the reason why Jane's name needed to be exactly as per her profile is because when the system is looking for Jane's uh, to see if Jane is a, a mobilised on a, on a work site, it's reading her name. OK, so please, we please ask that you don't use nicknames when you're creating the uh, EPP logins, um, because usually when you use nicknames, the system can't relate them to workers on the work site and you're not able to link the account. OK, and then it just causes some other little issues along the way. So please no nicknames here, just use um, their full name as per their profile. OK, so I've now linked that. I've told the system that this EPP user is also a worker on the work site. OK, let's go into act, uh, permissions and access. So in permissions in and, and access, this is where we can give our workers additional access to the system. OK, additional access to the system. So I want to make Jane a worksite contact so that she can create user accounts. So to do that, um, under work, role and worksite, you'll see this work user is a worksite contact. All I need to do is select that and click update. Jane will now be able to create logins for the EPP or user accounts for the EPP. OK, now Jane can only do that because I have the ability to do I can do that for Jane, sorry, because I have the ability to do that. OK. Then team, we've got our other access in our system. So down the side here, you'll have depending on what products you have with Damshra will be what access that you can apply to a worker's profile. We're going to focus today just on workforce management, though. So if I click on the Workforce Management tab, this is where I will get access to being able to add more granular additional access for Jane in the system. OK, so what you give Jane will honestly depend on what her role is and what you think she needs to have um, in her role. But here are all of your options. What I do recommend, I'm not going to go through all of these today just because we're you know, looking at, at how much time we've got um, to get through our content. But do take time to read through these and they'll let you know what extra um, access you can, um, can be assigned to a worker. Um, with view privacy sensitive information. What view privacy sensitive information gives your worker is the ability to view uh, workers' addresses, their date of birth and next of kin. I'll just show you what I mean by that. So let me, I didn't change anything in there, did I? So we'll say leave. Um, so let me show you what I mean. So if I bring up Jane's profile again, um, the login that I have currently does not give me, I've not got privacy um, information selected, privacy sensitive information selected. So here I can't see Jane's date of birth. If I go into her employee details, um, I'm very limited in what I can see. I can see her email address. Um, I can see at her Next of kin information is, is all NA, so I can't really see anything. I'm just going to jump into a different account that I have where, where I can actually um, see privacy sensitive information. So with privacy sensitive information, you'll see that up the top here, I've got access to Jane's date of birth. And then if I look at her employee details, I am able to see all of that information. OK, I can see her date of birth here as well. I can see her address. I can see her next of kin information. OK, so if you would like someone to be able to see that information, the setting that needs to be selected for them is the privacy um, sensitive information. Really important, though, that you have to have access to that to be able to give it access to somebody else. So this login that I'm in on this screen, I don't actually have that access. So if I try to give it to Jane, so I'm going to select that tick and I'm going to tick update, you'll see that it unticks that automatically um, because I don't have it. It doesn't allow me to give it to, to Jane. Okay, does anybody have any questions in regards to that?
right? So it might look like you can do it, but when you actually go to save, it doesn't allow you to do it. Really important. If you don't have it and nobody in your business has it, so no one can give it to you, again, just contact Damstra and Damstra will be able to apply it to your profile. Um, so having a look here, we've got view privacy sensitive information, um, access medical, the medical section, manage worksite bans, um, adding worksite skills, um, adding mobilizations, qualifications. Um, so here you've got all of this granular access that you can give to your workers. Anything that you want to give to them, you can just tick it for them. I know that I myself have um, add or edit worksite skills, so I'll give that to Jane, and I also have add or edit qualifications, so I'm going to give that to Jane as well, and I click update, um, and now Jane also has access to that. And that's how you set up a user account for the, uh, in the EPP. Does anybody have any questions in regards to that? No? Wonderful. The most important thing that I can stress to you is that if you don't have the access, you unfortunately can't give it to somebody else. If you need it, if somebody else in your business has it, they can give it to you or you can contact Damstra and we can apply it to your profile for you. Okay, let's move on to our next subject, which is uploading documentation. So uploading documentation gives you the ability to add qualifications or evidence to a worker's profile. OK, so things such as supervisor observations. So you on your work site, maybe conducting some supervisor observations and you need that evidence to be uploaded against a worker's profile. So what we're going to do is have a look at the um, two ways in the EPP that you can do that. OK, so there are two ways to do that process. Um, first of all, we're going to start off with the individual way to do that. So you can load um, a skill or what we call a skill against a worker's profile so that it shows up instantly against that worker's profile. Now, to be able to do that, you do need to have um, the ability to add or edit either worksite skills and appointments or add or edit qualifications and communications, just depending on which section you're putting that into the, system, uh, into the database. OK, when you've got these options selected, what that will mean for you is when you are looking at a worker's profile, and you're in the skills. So I'm going to add in a worksite skill. So I'm going to click on skills records and then I'm going to click on worksite skills. I will have this button up here in the top right hand corner, which is add worksite skill. OK, so how I got that ability was by having um, add or edit worksite skill ticked in my profile. OK, again, if you don't have it, either someone else in your business that has can give it to you as long as they're a worksite contact or you can contact the Dampstra team and they can apply that um, function for you. OK, so let's see how easy it is for you to upload documents that instantly go against a worker's profile. So from once you've retrieved your worker's profile, accessed the right skills section that you'd like to apply it to, we just click add worksite skill. A little pop up window will display for us. From the pop up window, what we need to do is select the skill or the qualification that we would like to apply to the workers profile. So team, if you don't have a, a specific skill or skill code created, you will need to get one created. So just remembering that everything that gets loaded against a worker's profile must have a skill or a skill code created for that. OK, and that's where it'll come in handy for us when we start running skills matrices, when we go and have a look at, at skills matrices in a second. OK, so once you find the skill, you select the skill that you'd like to apply. You are then um, entering in the as of dates 
Um, so I'm just going to select today and then you can either apply an expiry date or if there is no expiry date, just select no expiry date. I'm going to select no, no expiry date just for the purposes of training today. Uh, you then select the level that you'd like to apply to that skill. So I'm going to say that um, Jane is competent in her training test skill. I then upload uh, evidence, my evidence against that um, profile for against that skill. Let me just find some evidence. Let's use this one. We'll just go with our electrical certificate. Okay, upload our, our evidence and then I can put an optional note in if I want. And then all I do is click add skill and that will automatically add the skill to my workers profile. So team a lot faster than sending those skills to Damstra and asking Damstra to upload them for you. You can actually have them uploaded instantly against our workers profile. Now, if you do add it in and you accidentally add it maybe to the wrong person, um, it is also quite easy for you to delete that, um, that skill from a worker's profile. So to delete the skill from a worker's profile, if you click on the three dots at the end of the skill, you'll be, uh, you get an option to delete skill. So we click on delete skill. Now a warning will come up letting you know that if you delete this skill, it may impact the worker's mobilisation. OK, so please be really careful when you're deleting skills. If that skill is part of a mobilisation requirement and you do delete that skill from the worker's profile, that may stop them from being able to access the work site. OK, great thing is, is that a warning message comes up um, and you enter, you click on I understand and proceed you'll then be asked to put in a reason for cancelling that skill out, okay? So we've tried to make it so that you can't accidentally delete a skill from a worker's profile, okay? So once you pop in your reason, you then click delete skill, that will then remove the skill from your worker's profile, okay? So super easy to add them to a worker's profile and then super easy to delete them if you need to. If you needed to update a worker's skills, so let's say you had a skills coming up for expiry and you needed, they, they've reset their, their practical and you've got new evidence of their practical, it's quite easy to update. If you expand um, on that skill, what you're able to do is update the details uh, in the skill, upload the new file here and then select the update. Um, button to update that skill. Okay. Any questions in regards to that process? So uploading skills so they automatically go against a worker's profile. Yeah, pretty much, Jennifer. Yeah, so you've got to be really careful with that. Um, so because if it is a skill yeah, assigned to their their access, yeah, pretty much as instant. <laughs> so we don't want to be doing that. <laughs> so please be, yeah, be really careful when you're using the, the delete process. Yeah. We upload content, or does this still need to be uploaded through TWMS and then approved by Damstra? Um, Emily, it will depend on if the qualification is part of the mobilisation process or if it's part of um, just uploading skills against a worker's profile. Okay, so if it is part of the mobilisation process, so it needs to be validated, this you wouldn't follow this particular process here. Um, this um, is mainly um, adding in skills that don't impact the mobilisation process. Um, I think I'm put, giving you that warning in regards to deleting skills because you could delete, because you're in here, you could delete a skill that impacts um, the mobilisation process. But if it's in regards to qualifications for mobilisations, we wouldn't do it this way. This is for your additional um, qualifications. I hope that makes sense. When that worker skill is uploaded and you don't know when it expires, will Dan should do, um, sorry, I'm just reading, reading questions here. When that worker skill is uploaded and you don't know when it expires, will Dan should do it for you based on the skill code? So um, Heather, if there is, if you've assigned a, um, 
an expiry date against the skill code, the system does automatically work that out for you, which is wonderful. So if you create a skill code and you go, this skill will only be valid for a year, it does automatically work that out for you, which, which is good. But um, that needs to be applied to the actual skill code, which I guess you know, because you're, you're getting skill code set up. Yeah. I'm um, just reading another question here. The system does not need to refresh for any changes made from the profiles anymore. What if the skill is deleted and added in again and a few minutes later they will have it? Yeah, they should. Yeah, the system's pretty good now, Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty, pretty good now. Awesome. Okay, team. So we've had a look at how we do individual skills. Um, there is also a way to upload bulk skills to a worker's profile, which is really good. So how we do bulk process. So to access the bulk upload, what we do is click on workforce management and then we've got an option for upload employee documents. Now, the level of access that has the ability to do this is level two and level three access, okay? So level two and level three people automatically get this access. You only need to add that additional access if you want um, someone to have the ability to upload a skill directly to a worker's profile. Okay, but the ability to bulk upload, that um, that comes automatically with level two, level three users. Okay, so when we do our bulk upload, uh, what you'll do is upload your file. So let me just upload a file. Let's go with our electrical certificate again. Now, because the, how this process works is that you're uploading documents to be sent to Dampstra and the Dampstra team will actually apply these skills to your workers' profiles, okay? Now, um, we don't know what skill you want to apply and we don't automatically know who to apply the skill to. So it's super duper important that you give us that information. Okay, now how you give us that information is one of two ways. So you can either name the file, um, and when you name the file, you name the file with the person's name and ID number if you have it, with the skill code and the skill name. Okay, so rename this file that. Or what you can do in the description is name the description, the worker's details and the skill that you would like to apply to the worker's profile. When you do this process, what will happen is the system will rename this document to match what you've entered in this description here. Okay, so super important that you do this. Okay, otherwise we don't know who to apply it to. Okay. Now, what I want us to do is then, what you can then do next is upload another document and, and repeat that process, okay? But what I want us to sort of think about with this process is if I'm just doing individual documents, if I upload the document here and then rename it here and then send it off to Damstra, I then need to wait for Damstra to upload it against my workers profile. Whereas if I actually went into a worker's profile and uploaded the skill myself using this process, the skill will already be against the worker's profile. I don't need to wait for Damshu to do that. Okay. Now, I'm not... I'm, definitely not saying to you you shouldn't do this I am just saying that the time that it takes with both of those processes it's definitely faster to upload it yourself to the workers profile for an individual skill than to ask us to do that okay where this process comes in really handy for you is if you've got something like an attendance sheet. 
So you've got an attendance sheet. It may have 20 workers on that attendance sheet and you need to get a skill um, uploaded against all of those 20 workers. Uh, this is where this process will work really well for you. So you'll upload the attendance sheet, enter on into the description the name of the skill that you need to be uploaded against the worker's profile. And then what the team will do is the team will look at the names on the attendance list and they will upload the skill against all of those names on the attendance list. Okay. Now, What's really important with our process is that it needs to be easy for our team to be able to read those names on that attendance list. Okay, team, sorry, when I was talking to the team yesterday, they asked me to, to highlight that, to say that if they've got an attendance list that comes through, they will only be able to upload it against workers' um, profiles if they're actually able to read the workers' names on those attendance sheets. So if you've just got signatures on those attendance sheets, it does make it a little bit hard for our team because I know um, I definitely, if you were to read my signature, it looks nothing like my name. Um, but then also make sure people are nice and clear with writing their name. So it's easy for the team to, to be able to work out which employee to apply the the skill to does that all make sense guys can you give me like a thumbs up if that all makes sense yeah just makes it hard otherwise the team will have to send it back and and say hey we couldn't quite work out who who to send that or who to apply it to just because they're, they're not able to read that um but yeah so this is where i would use this process if i'm wanting to do a, a one document and bulk upload it to many profiles this section works really well. And then what you do then do is select the priority of um, the, the upload so the team can prioritise it accordingly. Uh, what you'll also have um, access to in the upload employee documents um, option is your pending. So if you've sent, once you send uh, documents off, off to us to upload, they'll move to the Your Pending section, so you'll be able to see what's pending for you. Um, you'll also be able to see your action, so you'll be able to see once they've been uploaded, they move into the, the action. Um, you do also have access to All Pending, so you'll be able to see what other people within your business have um, requested to be uploaded and what other um, requests have been actioned. Oh, I guess you could, Anthony, but that'd be, that'd be a lot of uploading. But I don't believe there is a limit, JP. Do you know if there's a limit on, like, the skills, like uploading attendance sheets? Let's see if JP knows if there's a limit. That would be one big sign-on sheet, Anthony, like a massive sign-on sheet. <laughs> That might be better for you to be using maybe for that those types of sign-ons, um, the health and safety calendar where people can actually tap onto a session instead of signing on manually. I don't know. Have you um, are you familiar with the health and safety calendar? Um, with the health and safety calendar and and being able to book sessions in there and then have people tap onto that, that might work better for you because then that will automatically apply against a worker's profile as well um, if you do it do it using the health and safety calendar. So team, um, there are a couple of other um, products that Damstra have with signing on to sessions that um, may work a bit better than a manual sign on sheet. So we do have the health and safety calendar uh, where you're able to, so in um, health and safety, health and safety calendar here where you're able to, oh, um, my login here doesn't actually give me access to create a, a health and safety session. Let me jump onto a different login. So here we go. Come on to this login, which gives me the ability to schedule in a session. So if you're not familiar with the health and safety calendar, so the health and safety calendar allows you to book in uh, or to schedule in pre-starts, toolbox talks or training sessions. Um, you set a date for that. Um, you set a trainer. You can apply a skill to the session. 
Um, and then uh, that session then becomes available to be managed via the TWMS app. Um, hopefully you're all familiar with the TWMS app. Um, and then via the TWMS app, um, you're able to tap workers on to that actual training session. So using the Damstra card, you're able to, to tap them on to the session and that records their attendance. And then once you close that the session out, it will actually record their attendance against their um, against their uh, profile as well. So there are some ways to, to automate that process. Damstra Forms, you can also create a sign-on sheet in Damstra Forms. And with that sign-on sheet in Damstra Forms, we now um, have the ability to have one form apply against many workers' profiles. Um, so you can have them actually physically sign on to a form via Damstra Forms. And then once you close that form, um, that form will then automatically upload against all those workers profiles. So there are definitely ways to um, automate having um, skills apply against workers profiles. If that's something you're interested in knowing more about, let us know in the chat window and we can either contact you to let you know about those two processes, look at doing some training one on one with you, or um, potentially that could be um, one of our upcoming webinars that we run. Um, depending on how interested people are in regards to that. Okay, so team, that is how we upload workers' um, documentation against workers' profile. So either individually it goes directly against a workers' profile or um, via um, the bulk upload. Okay, last thing we're going to have a look at today are um, looking at how we create a skills matrix. So first thing I guess we need to discuss is what is a skills matrix? So a skills matrix is a report that you run and it's pretty much a bespoke report where you create a report um, which includes specific workers and then specific skills as well. Okay, so here we've got an example of a skills matrix. So on this particular skills matrix, I can see that I've got 91 valid skills. I've got no skills expiring in the next 90 days. I've got two expired skills. Here's a list of the name of all of the workers um, that I've requested on the, this skills matrix. I'm able to include other information on the skills matrix as well. So on this one, I've, I've included, um, I've, I've asked to include the crew, the department they work in. Um, we've got their induction expiry date. Here are then all of my skills that I had included on the skills matrix. And here I can easily see who has the skill and who doesn't have the skill. And for those that do have the skill, has it expired or is it still valid? Okay, with skills matrixes, um, you're able to run a one-off skills matrix um, if you just needed to find some information quickly. Alternatively, you can actually save that skills matrix so that the skills matrix is saved in your database. And then each time you go into that skills matrix, it will update and show you the latest data from your database um, based on the parameters that you set in that skills matrix. Okay, so you're able to, to create them. When you do create a skills matrix and save it, you are also able to share that. So I can create a skills matrix for my eyes only, or I can create a skills matrix and share it with specific people, or I can create a, a skills matrix and make it public. And um, when I make it public, it means that anyone who has a level two or level three access is able to view that skills matrix. Lastly, I can also schedule my skills, skills matrix to email out. So I can set up a skills matrix, then schedule it to either email daily, weekly or monthly. Um, when I schedule an, a skills matrix, I'm actually able to um, schedule it to be emailed to any level one, level two or level three users. Okay, I can only schedule it to users, um, to people who have user profiles in the EPP and that is due to privacy reasons. Okay, so I'm unfortunately not able to schedule it outside of the out of um, side of the the users user group in in the EPP. Um, and as I said, that's due to, to uh, privacy issues. 
OK, well, let's go in and have a look at how easy it is to create the skills matrix. Now, to be able to create a skills matrix, you do need to be either a level two or level three user and you access skills matrices from workforce management. And then you'll have an option for skills matrix. I mentioned earlier that level one users have access to basic skill searches. This is this option here. OK, basic skill search here, um, but we're going to create a skills matrix. So we're going to select skills matrix. Now, when I select skills matrix, um, what you'll see is a list of any of the skills matrices that you have created in the past. To view one of those skills matrices, I just click on the on the name of the skills matrix. It will then display that skills matrix for me. Um, you can see that it's thinking. The reason why it's thinking is because it's going into the database and it's updating my report with the latest information. OK, so here we can see our skills matrix. Um, so how I create a new skills matrix is up in the top right hand corner. You'll see that I've got a green button new skills matrix. So I click on create new skills matrix and then it's a three step process. The, uh, let's check that, Cynthia. Let's have a look. I have a geese. Um, so Cynthia is asked, can you select multiple job types? Because my database doesn't have much in it, I always just um, select um, <laughs> very broad. So let's let's have a look. OK, so um, oh, I actually I think you might be thinking about the jobs matrix, not the um, not the, doo -doo 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 skills matrix. But let's have let's have a look. I'm pretty sure you can select multiple crews. Let's go in and have a look. OK, so. First thing we need to do is have a look at the employees that we would like to select. So having a look at the list, um, we've got lots of different choices here. So I can select all employees, the only those with a valid induction or registration. I can select by crew, by company um, and so on. So let's have a look at Cynthia's question. Can we select multiple crews? So what I do here is select crew. And then, yeah, you can. So I can pop this crew and we'll go with this crew. So, yeah, we can definitely select multiple crews. Um, I didn't have the option here of job titles, though. So um, it doesn't look like I can select by actual actual job title here. What I'm going to do, though, for this, the purposes of this training is I'm going to select all employees so I don't have a lot in my database. The next option that I have is don't show an employee in the matrix if they have none of the skill, skills selected. Whether you select this or not, it's up to you. I guess it just depends on whether you want to be able to view if uh, who doesn't have a skill. OK, so again, whether you choose it will be do, do I want to know who doesn't as well as who does? Or do I just want to know who does have that skill? Uh, so we're going to select it for today's training. So first thing we did was decide who we want to be included in the skills matrix. And then we're going to now select the skills that we would like in the skills matrix. OK, so again, we've got lots of different options to choose from. So I can individually select the skills. I can go with all skills, parent skills, skills with skill codes. Uh, we can do skills by group, skills by type. Um, this will be different for all of you. So you know how your skills have been set up within your database. So selecting these will be determined by, by, by that. I'm going to go with individual skills, though. Uh, and then when I've got individual skills, what I can then do is filter my skills by group. So let me go with um, Dampstra Forms, just because I know I've got a few here with Dampstra Forms. Um, and then I will select some of my Dampstra form skills here. Go with all of these. OK, now something you can also do is if you create a list of skills and you think, right, I like that list of skills, I might want to use it on another skills matrix at a later time. What you can do is create a new um, skills list, which will include all of these skills. So let me just call this Karina's list. 
Okay, and then what will happen is it'll save this list for me. And then when I go to my list, my um, Karina's skill list will appear. Um, are you going to be in there already? Yeah, Karina's skill list will appear down here in your saved lists. Okay, so this is a great option if potentially you're creating a skills matrix and you um, are, are making it separate for different crews and you want to repeat that process, that'll just um, make that process a little bit faster for you. Okay, we have decided on our data. The next thing we need to do is now decide on how we want our matrix to look. Okay, so um, we can reorder our skills. So if the way these have displayed doesn't um, suit you, you're actually able to reorder these. So how we reorder it is by placing our cursor on the skill and then clicking and dragging, and that will reorder the order that our skills will display in, say, like the spreadsheet, I guess. I then decide what I'd like to include. So um, the system will default to crew name, but I can also include department, maybe the company they work for, might want to include job titles in there as well. Um, I can just change the display. So currently this is set up as icon expiry date and skill level. So it looks like this, but what I can also do is just have it display as icon only. I personally like icon um, expiry date and skills so I'll change it to that and then we've got some additional settings so I can include a start date uh, for the skill I can only show expired skills and skills expiring in the next 90 days so that'd be a great way to keep a track of your upcoming expiries um, I can abbreviate the skills so if I click on that you'll see here that the skill level has abbreviated um, and then I can also select show time frame until the skill expires so here I can see if I've got anything coming up for expiry it's going to let me know how how um, when it's actually going to expire okay. and then the last thing you can do is um, customize the coloring if you like so you can click on here and, and change the colours. I'm quite used to these colours, so I'll leave them as they are, but you do have the ability to customise it to um, your view. And if you do customise the colours, you can then create a new theme with your new colours. Okay, once you've set the, the um, display, we can then run our skills matrix. So what we'll do is we'll view our skills matrix. Oh, I don't have many on my on this particular skills matrix but so I've got 44 valid skills none expiring in the next 90 days and two expired skills so here is my skills matrix now I can if all I wanted to do was run this quickly to get some data I can escape out of here but if I'd like to save this skills matrix um, so that I can refer to it in the future you'll see I've got a green button save skills matrix so I will save the skills matrix it does come in a um a little bit we'll have a look at that pauline we'll have a look at what that looks like yeah um so when we save the skills matrix we give it a name we'll just call this karina's matrix and then i decide who i want to see it so is it just me public or shared if I do want to share it, what I do is select other people who have access to the EPP. So here I can say I want to share that with John and I'd also like to share it with, where's Jane gone? Jane, share it with Jane as well. So myself, John and Jane will be able to see this um, skills matrix. Okay, so let's click save matrix. and our matrix is now saved. So once we've saved our matrix, we are able to select um, details. So I can go in and change who can see my skills matrix. I can go in and update the data. So if I wanted to add or delete some skills, I can do that. I can go in and play with the default colors or the, the way the skill matrix um, views. Uh, lastly, I can go in and schedule my skills matrix so that it emails out. So to schedule it, I 
um, say, yes, I'd like to schedule that. I give it a description, which will be the summary. I can then decide if I'd like it to be emailed out daily, weekly, uh, or monthly. And if I do it monthly, I can decide the day of the month that I'd like it to go on. Um, I set the time that I would like it to go, and then I select the recipients. So just remembering the recipients that come up here all have to have access to um, the EPP. Okay, have to have um, access to the EPP. I'm not going to schedule that though. I don't want to send that out to anyone. So yeah. Um, to download, so to download, so let's have a look at this for Cynthia. So click the download button. That downloads that into an Excel spreadsheet for us. And if we go in and have a look at the spreadsheet. Um, so it's, this is what the data will look like. Okay, so a little bit crazy in places, but yeah, so this is what your data will look like when you download it. In regards to the Cullen legend on the spreadsheet, I'm not sure, Cynthia, I haven't actually done that, that before. Let's um, go in and change colours and see if it changes. Oh, let's go display, change you to orange, change you to blue. Um, let's change valid to pink. Okay, let's update you. Let's see if that changes that. So it's changed it here for us, but potentially on the download, it may not change it on the download. I'm thinking because it's going to X. Oh, no, it's changed it. Yeah. Is that what you were referring to, Cynthia? These colours here? Oh, okay. Oh, maybe it's getting, um, don't know. Why it's going to black and white and not colour? I'm not sure, hun. I know. But um, yeah, so that is how you create a skills matrix. Now, if you've created a skills matrix and you're like, oh, I don't need that skills matrix any longer, you can actually delete that skills matrix. So if I click the three dots, um, the options that I have is I can copy the skills matrix. So if I copy a skills matrix and um, I then can go in and make changes to it. So that's an alternate. Do you remember how I was saying if we can, you know, save a list of skills? What we could also do is duplicate the skills matrix and then um, make changes to the skills matrix. I can share the skills matrix and then I can delete the skills matrix. So if you do delete a skills matrix, Good news is, is that skills matrix is not lost forever. It actually moves to the deleted matrixes tab. And then from the deleted matrixes tab, you can actually revert that skills matrix back to a live skills matrix. Okay, it will revert back to be a live skills matrix. So you don't lose it forever, which is, which is wonderful, but I might delete you again. And that is how you create a skills matrix. Does anybody have any other questions? No? Okay, team, well, thank you. So oh, wait a second. Are all functions in EPP fully launched now or in trial period? say for example the report functions so there are some reporting that you can do in the epp so um the reporting functions in the epp are definitely not as robust as what they are in twms um the reporting um in the epp um is moving into insights. Sorry, I had to think of what I was going to say that. So for reporting, once um, when your business gets insights, that's where reporting from the EPP will move to from the reporting that all of that robust reporting that you have in TWMS. That won't be available in the reports um, function here. That'll actually be available via insights. So, yeah, so it's definitely coming. If you don't already have it, it'll definitely be um, in Insights. What is Insights? Insights is our new um, reporting tool. Um, so, Pauline, 
maybe speak with your account manager in regards to that. Yeah. Um, how can I select multiple job titles? Uh, in a skills matrix, um, I don't think you have the ability to um, create skills matrixes based on um, job titles. Are you wanting, are you talking about the job title matrix? Yeah, so in the job title matrix, currently you can only select one job title um, in the job title matrix, doesn't have the ability to select multiple um, job titles here. Ah, oh, that's a good idea, Pauline. So what um, Paul, what Cynthia is saying, um, Paul, um, what Pauline is saying, sorry, Cynthia, is to have those job titles in a um, as a crew, and then run it based on those different crews. Um, so who can I approach if we need asset? Um, I, Cherry, I'll take that offline and we'll um chat about that offline if that's okay. Yeah, well, we definitely organise that for you. Um, so does that make sense, um, Cynthia? Yeah, so with your crews, you can create a crew to have whoever you want in that crew. So if I go workforce management um, and then all crews, in crews, you can create a crew however you want to create a crew. So to create a new crew, you click the create new crew button. I give my crew a name, we'll just call this Karina's crew for the point, for, for just for training. I then um, select the, I need to give the crew a manager. So I'll give myself a manager as the manager. And then I'll say my, my real me, um, the manager. And then what you're able to do is um, add employees through here. So you're able to create your uh, a, a crew for each of your job titles. If that hasn't already been done for you, so if you actually go into crews, you may already have crews which have been created based on job titles. I don't have any in my database, but maybe Cynthia, we can um, can do that, uh, can take that offline for you and have a look at how we can get those crews created into job titles, because then you'll be able to run your skills matrices based on the crews with members from those, those job titles. Is that okay? Yeah, awesome. Does anybody else have any questions? No, I just think I'm just um, conscious of the time we've run a little bit over. Okay, team. Well, I hope you've learned something today um, that can help you um, manage your work site a bit better. In regards to um, any access, gaining extra access, just remember if somebody on your site is a work site um, contact and they've got the access, they'll be able to give you the access if you don't already have it. Um, if you need to become a work site contact or you need and you need to then have additional access, please contact the Dentistry team and they'll be able to do that for you. Um, have a wonderful afternoon. Bye, everybody. You're more than welcome. <laughs>